Hi and welcome to John's Maths Book. In this video, we're going to be looking at calculating the area between two curves using integration. If you like the video, then please hit the like button and I'd be delighted and honored if you'd subscribe to the channel. Without further ado, let's go over to the whiteboard. If you've watched my previous videos, you would have seen that we can find the area under a curve using integration. In this video, we are going to take this a stage further and use integration to find the area between two curves. On the left of the board, we have plotted the graph of y is equal to f of x and y is equal to g of x. The curves intersect at x is equal to a and x is equal to b. The area under the curve from x is equal to a to x is equal to b of f of x can be given as follows. It is the integral from a to b of f of x dx. In the diagram, this is denoted by the area colored in blue. The area under the curve from x is equal to a to x is equal to b of g of x can be given as the integral from a to b of g of x dx. On the diagram, this is the area shaded in blue plus the area shaded in pink. If we subtract the area under the curve of f of x from g of x between the limits of a and b, so the blue area plus the pink area, which represents the function g of x, minus the blue area, which represents the area under the function f of x. If we then perform this sum, this will equal the pink area. And the pink area would be the area between these curves. In integration terms, this can be written as follows. So it would be the integral from a to b of g of x dx minus the integral from a to b of f of x dx. This can be written as the integral from a to b of g of x minus f of x dx. In this case, both curves are above the x-axis between the limits of a and b. So when we integrate each of these functions between a and b, they will both yield a positive result. In this next example, I've again plotted a graph of y is equal to g of x and y is equal to f of x and marked points a and b on the x-axis. Between these points, we see that the function g of x is above the x-axis and the function f of x is below the x-axis. If we now look at the area between the curves, we see it is made up as follows. We can use integration to do this. So for g of x, the area under the curve between a and b is given by the integral from a to b of g of x dx. This is the pink area and will be a positive value. For the function f of x, the area under the curve between a and b is given by the integral from a to b of f of x dx. This is the blue area shown on the diagram and will be a negative value. The area between g of x and f of x across the interval between x is equal to a and x is equal to b is the sum of the pink area and the blue area. In our previous example, where both areas were positive, we were able to subtract the two areas to give the total area between the curves. Well, we can do the same here too, where one area is positive and the other area is negative. As when we subtract the negative area, the two negatives become a positive, effectively summing the two regions. So the area between the curves in this case is given by the integral from a to b of g of x minus f of x dx. Now in this example, we want to find the area between function g of x and function f of x between points a and b on the x-axis. We can use integration to do this. So for g of x, the area under the curve between x is equal to a and x is equal to b is given by the integral from a to b of g of x dx. This is the pink area and it will be negative as the curve is below the x-axis. 
For f of x, the area under the curve between a and b is given by the integral from a to b of f of x dx. This is shown as the blue area plus the pink area, and it will be negative. So to find the area between the curves across the interval a and b, we can again subtract the area of f of, f of x between these intervals from the area of g of x between these intervals. So the area of g of x is shown by the pink area minus the pink area plus the blue area. And when we do this sum, we'd be left with the blue area. And this would be a negative value. But as areas cannot be negative, we would treat the result as a positive value. So in integration terms, we would once again be performing the integral from a to b of g of x minus f of x dx. To once again re reiterate, this would give us the blue area, which would be negative. But as areas cannot be negative, we would treat this as a positive number. Now let's take a look at this function and try and find the area under its curve between x is equal to a and x is equal to c. Note I've added the point x is equal to b to show where the function crosses the x-axis. We can see that between points a and b, the area under the curve is above the x-axis. This area is shaded in blue and is a positive value. The area between b and c, shaded in pink, is below the x-axis and is a negative value. So to evaluate the area between x is equal to a and x is equal to c, the pink area plus the blue area, we would need to evaluate two integrals. The first integral would be the integral from a to b of f of x dx. This would return a positive value and is represented by the blue region in the diagram. And then we'd need to evaluate the integral from b to c of f of x dx. This would return a negative value and is represented by the pink region on the diagram. As areas cannot be negative, we would need to treat the result of the second integral as a positive value. We could then add the blue region to the pink region, noting once again that we need to take the positive value of the pink region, and that would give us the total area. So let's look at a real example now. So I've drawn two curves on an x-y axis. So the red curve represents y is equal to x squared, and the blue curve represents y is equal to minus x squared plus x plus 6. Now here we want to find the pink shaded area. So that's the area between the two graphs. So before we can do this, we need to find where the two curves inter intersect so we can find the limits on our integral. So the two curves intersect where x squared, which is the first function, is equal to the second function minus x squared plus x plus 6. So if we bring everything over onto the left hand side here, we get 2x squared minus x minus 6 is equal to 0. Now this factorizes as follows. We have 2x plus 3 multiplied by x minus 2, and that all equals 0. So this will now give us the points on the x-axis between which we want to perform our integration. So our first point on the x-axis is 2x plus 3 equals 0. So x is equal to minus 3 divided by 2. Our next point is x minus 2 equals 0. So x is equal to 2. So let's add these points in on the diagram. So x equals minus 3 over 2 can be seen here. And x equals 2 can be seen here. So the integral from minus 3 divided by 2 to 2 of minus x squared plus x plus 6 dx is represented by the blue area plus the pink area. And the integral from minus 3 over 2 to 2 of x squared 
dx is represented by the blue area. Both integrals should return positive results as the curve across those two intervals in both cases is above the x-axis. So to find the area in pink, we perform the following integral. So we integrate from minus 3 over 2 to 2 of minus x squared plus x plus 6. So that's the blue and the pink area. And then we subtract the area, the blue area, which is x squared, and that'll be dx. So we can tidy that up a bit. So it's the integral between minus 3 over 2 and 2 minus 2x squared plus x plus 6 dx. Now if we use the power rule to perform the integration, the integral of minus 2x squared is minus 2x cubed divided by 3. The integral of x is plus x squared divided by 2. And the integral of 6 is 6x. And we need to evaluate that from minus 3 divided by 2 to the value of 2. So let's now evaluate between these limits. So if we put our value of 2 into this expression, we get minus 16 over 3 plus 2 plus 12. And then we need to subtract from this the expression when we put minus 3 over 2 in for x. That's minus minus 2 times minus 27 divided by 8. That's divided by 3. And if we put minus 3 over 2 into the x squared over 2 part of the expression, we get plus 9 divided by 8. And if we put minus 3 over 2 into the 6x part of the expression, we get minus 18 divided by 2. So the first bracket evaluates to 8 and 2 thirds, and that's minus. And then the second bracket evaluates to minus 5 and 5 eighths. So this is 8 and 2 thirds plus 5 and 5 eighths, which works out to be 342 divided by 24.